The Tempest, Act 2, Scene 2, Lines 1 to 54. In this scene, Caliban enters carrying wood. He delivers a monologue in which he curses Prospero and describes the many torments Prospero's spirits inflict on him. Just then, Trinculo, Alonso's jester, enters. Let us listen to the audio. Scene 2. Another part of the island. Enter Caliban with a burden of wood. A noise of thunder heard. All the infections that the sun sucks up from bogs, fence, flats on prosper fall, and making by inch meal a disease. His spirits hear me, and yet I needs must curse. But they'll know a pinch, fright me with urchin shows, pitch me in the mire, nor leave me like a firebrand in the dark out of my way, unless he bid em. But for every trifle are they set upon me, sometime like apes that mow and chatter at me, and after bite me, then like hedgehogs, which lie tumbling in my barefoot way, and mount their pricks at my footfall. Sometime am I all wound with adders, who with cloven tongues do hiss me into madness. Enter Trinculo. Law now, law! Here comes the spirit of his, and to torment me for bringing wood in slowly. I'll fall flat. Perchance he will not mind me. He has neither bush nor shrub to bear off any weather at all, and another storm brewing. I hear it sing in the wind. Yon sing black cloud, yon huge one. Looks like a foul bombard that would shed his liquor. If it should thunder as it did before, I know not where to hide my head. Yon same cloud cannot choose befall by pale fools. What have we here? A man or a fish? Dead or alive? A fish. <laughs> he smells like a fish. A very ancient and fish-like smell. A kind of knot of the newest poor John. A strange fish. Were I in England now, as once I was, and had but this fish painted, not a holiday fool there but would give a piece of silver. There would this monster make a man. Any strange beast there makes a man. When they will not give a Dwight to relieve a lame beggar, they will lay out ten to see a dead Indian. Legged like a man, and his fins like arms, warm on my troth. I do now let loose my opinion, hold it no longer. This is no fish, but an islander, that hath lately suffered by a thunderbolt. Thunder! Alas, the storm has come again. My best way is to creep under his gabardine. There is no other shelter hereabout. Ah, oh, misery acquaints a man with strange bedfellows. I will hear shroud till the dregs of the storm be past. Enter Stefano, singing, a bottle in his hand. I shall no more to sea to sea, here shall I die ashore. This is a very scurvy tune to sing at a man's funeral. Well, here's my comfort. Drinks. Sings. The master, the swabber, the bosun, and I, the gunner and his mate, loved Mal, Meg, and Marion, and Marjorie, but none of us cared for Kate. For she had a tongue with a tang, would cry to a sailor, Go hang! She loved not the savour of tar nor of pitch, yet a tailor might scratch her where e'er she did itch. Then to sea, boys, and let her go hang. This is a scurvy tune, too, but here's my comfort. Drinks. So now let's deal with the text. Caliban, who's gone to get wood, is dreading his return to Prospero's hut. And on the way, he is delaying his return as much as possible while cursing Prospero. And this is where he starts. All the infections that the sun sucks up from bogs, fence, flats, on prosper fall, and make him by inch meal a disease. His spirits hear me, and yet I needs must curse. He says, let all the infections that the sun sucks up from marshes, swamps, and flats fall on Prospero, and make him sick every inch of him, 
may be made sick. And he says, he sees his spirits watching him cursing Prospero. But he says, I need to curse. That's my habit. That's who I am. But they'll not pinch, fright me with urchin shows, pitch me in the mire, nor lead me like a firebrand in the dark out of my way, unless he did bid them. He says, they will not pinch me, they will not frighten me, they will not throw me in the mud mire, they will not lead me astray like a uh, firebrand, like a torch in the dark. Unless he orders them, unless he bids them. So in other words, for every torment that Caliban is going through, he holds Prospero responsible. But for every trifle are they set upon me, sometime like apes that mow and chatter at me, and after bite me, then like hedgehogs which lie tumbling in my barefoot, barefoot way and mount their pricks at my footfall. Sometime... Am I all wound with adders who with cloven tongues do hiss me into madness? He says, so many problems I have to go through. He says, sometimes apes come and mow at me. They make faces at me. They, sh they chatter at me. They bite me. And then hedgehogs like porcupines. They, they lie at my barefoot. And prick with their quills. Sometimes I am all wound with adders. Sometimes I am covered with snakes. Who with their hiss make me mad. And after he has cursed enough Prospero. There enters Trink Trinkolo. Who is Trinculo? Trinculo is the jester of Alonso the king. Okay, And he says, Lo, now, lo, here comes the spirit of his. Whose spirit? Prospero's spirit. He thinks Trinculo is one of Prospero's. Um, Caliban thinks and um, understands that Trinculo is one of Cal um, Prospero's spirits. And he says, here comes a spirit of his. And to torment me for bringing wood in slowly. He says he's come to torment me too, uh, to, uh, for bringing the wood uh, slowly. I'll, I'll flat, fall flat, he says. Perchance he will not mind me. He says, let me lie low. Perhaps, perchance, by chance he will not see me. Trinkolo is... On his way, he hasn't, hasn't noticed Caliban. He says to himself, he has neither bush nor shrub to bear off any weather at all. And another storm brewing. I hear it singing, sing in the wind. Yond, same black cloud, yond, huge one. Looks like a foul bombard that would shed his liquor. He says, there are no bushes or shrubs to protect me from the weather here. And there's another storm brewing. I can see it. I can hear it in the way the winds are whistling. That huge black cloud over there looks like a filthy liquor jug. Bombard is liquor jug. That's about to pour its contents on us. If it should thunder as it did before, I know not where to hide my head. Yon same cloud cannot choose but fall by palefuls. It says, it will be terrible if the thunder is like it was earlier. Okay. And it will be miserable if that rain falls like palefuls, like bucketfuls. What have we here? And he notices Caliban. He doesn't recognize it as human being, but he sees a lump of thing there. And he says, what have we here? A man or a fish, dead or alive. A fish, he smells like a fish. A very ancient and fish-like smell. A kind of not of newest poor John. He says it's definitely a fish. It smells like fish. But 
it's definitely no poor john is dry fish here dried fish okay and it's definitely not like the new dried fish it's old ancient rotten dried fish a strange fish where were i in england now as once i was and had but this fish painted not a holiday full there but would give a piece of silver there would this monster make a man any strange beast there makes a man when they will not give a doit to relieve a lame beggar they will lazy out 10 to see a dead indian it says if i were in england now like i was once and i had even a painted picture of this fish every fool there would give me a piece of silver to look at it in england the strange monster would be just like a man any strange beast there can be considered a man a little bit insulting here to the londoners the man there the men there would give a penny to a lame beggar but they'll pay 10 cents to look at a freak show exhibit dead indian and strange creatures they wouldn't pay a money to a lame beggar but they will pay 10 times more to see a strange creature legged like a man and his fins like arms warm my troth i do not let lose my opinion hold it no longer this is no fish but an islander that hath lately suffered by a thunderbolt he says this guy has legs like man but fins for arms and he is still warm and he is still warm my god he says i guess this is not a fish but a native an islander an islander he is a native of this land who got struck by a lightning just now and as soon as he says that there is a thunder heard alas the storm has come again my best way is to creep under the under his gabardine there is no other shelter here about misery acquaints a man with strange bedfellows i will here shroud till the dregs of the storm pass uh, be past oh here comes the storm again he says for me the best way best thing to do is hide under his cloak under caliban's cloak because there is no other shelter and misery misery is the one who makes a person to hide under a stranger's bed otherwise he would not bother about the stranger but miserable miserable conditions like these make a stranger a person hide and sleep with a stranger <laughs> i will hear shroud until the dregs of the storm be past he says i will take shelter here till the sediments of the storm are over at that moment as trinkolo has said this stefano another person from alonzo's court is making his way towards them and none of them notice each other of course at the beginning So Stefano is drunk he's singing he is carrying a bottle of drink with him and he's singing and what's this song and this is what he sings I shall no more to see to see here shall I die ashore this is a very scurvy tune to sing at a man's funeral well here's my comfort he says he says what's this, what's the translation I'll never I will never go to sea again I'll die here on shore This is a rotten song to sing at a man's funeral at least I've got some booze to comfort me and he drinks He drinks more and he sings more and his what's the continuation of his song and he sings the master the swabber the boatswain and i the gunner and his mate loved mol meg marian and marjorie but none of us cared for kate for she had a tongue with a tang would cry to a sailor go hang 
What is he singing? This he's saying the master, the deck washer, the bosun, and I, the gunman and his friend, we loved Moll, Meg, Marion, and Marjorie. But none of us cared for Kate. These were these were their girls. And there's another girl they did not care for. Why did they did not care for her? Because she disliked them. Kate had a, a gutter mouth. She had a foul mouth. Okay. And would shout to sailors, go to hell. She did not carry, uh, uh, worry about, she did not care about the sailors. She hated them, in fact. She didn't like ship smells like tar. But, so, sorry. Here, she loved not the savor of tar nor of pitch, yet a, a tailor might scratch her where'er she did itch. Then to sea boys and let her go hang. This is a scurvy tune too, but here's my comfort. She did not, she didn't like ship smells like tar, but liked it okay when a tailor took her to bed. She liked the tailors. She liked sleeping with them, but not the sailors. Go to sea boys and let her go to hell. That's a rotten song too, but here's something to comfort me. And he drinks from his bottle again. So that's all for today. Thank you very much.